Good evening, I'm Jeff Koinange, and this is Jeff Koinange Live. And you know if it's Thursday, it's all about inspiration. Tonight, you're going to be inspired. I guarantee you all your money back. Because this young lady, and I mean young lady, she's barely in her late 20s, is a superstar. Make that superwoman. To make it worse, I knew her as a little baby. <laughs> How about that? Who would have thunk? Who would have thought she turned out to be who she is? But she is. Her first big hit was actually a collab with a guy called David Mathenge. You know him better as Nameless. Remember Sunshine back in 09? Huge, huge hit. It won an uh, MTV award back then. Huge hit. After that, My Reason, 2011. Another big hit. Now, she's giving back. In the form of raising awareness, and lifting, giving young ladies a reason to smile. She's calling it Superwoman after her latest song title. Hopefully she can sing it a little bit for us and inspire you as she does millions of people out there. Her Twitter handle is at Habida. By the way, Habida means love in Pocomo. Po, po what? <laughs> My Twitter handle is at Kananka Jeff. The hashtag is JKL. Sit back. Ha be da. Look at you. Look at you. Oh my gosh, you see, I got sweaty hands. <laughs> I'm on the bench. Yes. How are you, Habita? I'm good. I'm You're really such good. a superstar. I mean, I can't believe I knew you when you were this big. I know. Do you I, remember? Well, no, but I was this big. <laughs> you don't remember? No. The, 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 the big star, St. Mary's, you know. Uh, <laughs> I do remember you though. Your dad yeah. taught me, you know that. I know, yeah. Great man, God rest his soul. Yes, yes. Mr. Maloney, yeah. Mike Maloney. Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Huh? Great guy. And look what he look look what he produced. <laughs> Pocomo. Yeah. Where do they meet? Nairobi. My mother was a hustler, you know? A go getter. And she left Mombasa and she was like, I want Nairobi, because you know, that was the city to go to for work. Yeah. So yeah. Did you know you wanted to sing when you were a kid? I did. Yeah? Yeah. Like what? When you were five, were you singing hymns? Were you singing? Doris Day. I used to put my dad's um, vinyl on the, on the thing, and I'd be in mom's clothes, huge, you know, with her red lipstick. Come on. And I would be there with the, you know, the comb and stuff and brush. And guess what? Dad did not want me to sing. Oh, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> but you, ins I mean, you pursued this. I mean, you never yeah. let that dream die. I even ran away from home. You kidding? No. How old were you? 16. Uh, where'd you go? London. <laughs> I know, I didn't go down the you road. You didn't go to I Kilimani went, or, you know. Uh, I moved to London. Come on. Yeah. You're a real rebel. I am. What do they do? Well, I think my dad was fine with it because he had done almost the same thing. Um, his whole family, you know, is a family of doctors, whatever, whatever. And he decided to be a priest. So, I mean, that's not rebel. In those days, that was like seen as... But then he left the priesthood and he basically moved to Africa. You don't do that no. in the 60s. No, you don't? No. So you left at 16, yeah. went to London with what, a man or...? No, I met one there. You go, girl. How much time do we have? <laughs> I know how much time do you have. I know. I should write a book. Maybe you should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So were you singing then? Um, basically, I had the passion for it. So I used to, I used to, I sat in a studio. Ironic now, but with Miriam Makeba's ex-husband, whose name is Charlie. I sat in his studio in North London for six months before he listened to me. And I'd go every day religiously after work, I was a waitress, and I'd be like, please listen to me, please let me sing, please let me do something, please do something with me. And then after six months, he goes, fine, go record something. I'm like, but you have a studio. But he made me go, I found another studio, recorded there, brought him a really crappy demo. Really crappy. Yeah. And but did you think it was good then? <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah, okay. What did he think? He was like, poor girl, come on, you've done so much, get in there. And he got me, luckily he got me a producer who was signed to BMG at the time. And I don't know, we kind of fell in love with each other 
a brother and sister style and he mentored me and kind of took me through to where I am today. Did they say you had the potential? Did they say, you know, this woman has something? You know what? I didn't hear that until I got to the States. Well, from from the people I was working with. I so think what were you doing? Just demos? Were you just polishing London, your skills? Or? In London, it's kind of harder. Yeah. I did I did meet with Polydor at, at a certain point, and they offered me a deal, but it was pop. And I was a really big head at that time, and I wanted R&B. And I remember the guy saying, well, this is not the place for you. There's the door. And I said, fine. I know. I look back now, and I'm like, Phew. Yeah. So you went to America? I did. And? And I... Had you left the guy you had met after oh, you ran away? Oh, that didn't even last six months. But at least, you know. And your folks at this time know you're okay? Well, my mom said, I know she'll be back, so I knew I was never going back. <laughs> I would not fail because yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, stubbornness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you were in America? I'm in America, and I decided to study because, you know, there was this whole thing, your father is the biggest educator in Kenya, how can you not? So I decided to study, and I said, well, if I'm studying, I'm studying what I love, which is acting, performing arts. So I did... I did a split. I did a performing arts and a theater, musical theater good, degree. Good. Yeah. Well done. Always Thank good. You. I mean, that's good for the young people out there. No, it's very important. Right? Yeah. You have to have a fallback. Yeah. But were you still singing on the side? Were you still? Oh, yeah. At like till six in the morning. And I used to get like two, three hours sleep every day. Come on. Come on. Sing something for me, man. You know, at this point, people are just saying she sings all the time. She did Doris Day. Sing something for me. Okay, I'll sing my reason. Go on. You're my reason, I don't know no treason, me, me now, eh, eh. Hello, baby, I just want to tell you how I feel. See your gold pretend on my pansy, that's for real. It feels so good, I don't have to guess about love no more, no. <laughs> and you sing from deep down here, you know that? I oh, can yeah? tell. I, yeah, I okay, can tell. Okay, okay. Good. Well done. Thank you. Is that your own song? Yeah. My Reason? Yeah. That was a big hit. It was. Hmm? It was. And you got a whole bunch of nominations? Yeah. Channel O. Yeah. Yeah. The Chagulatinis, all the little ones that don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Chagulat. It's okay. It's man, okay. man, it's something. Mm -hmm. Recognition. So, we're still in America. We're in America and I finished my degree and doing my degree I met with a lot of really, Atlanta is amazing. You walk down the street and you just meet people, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, a lot of black people. Yeah, successful black people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very motivating. Um, Daniel Meacham, he's a Wesley Snipes lawyer, Denzel Washington, people like that. And I met him, when I meet him? Oh some, gosh, some I don't club somewhere. somewhere. No, he's an old man now. Oh, right. <laughs> he wasn't in a club. <laughs> um, and he, oh, he will kill me for saying that if Go he on. ever sees that. But anyway, um, he hooked me up with uh, Dallas Austin. He hooked me up with uh, Tricky Stewart. And these are people who've worked with Britney Spears, TLC, all these, you know. Yeah, so unfortunately, this, which is part of my campaign, I'm telling the story of how... It's not been easy. I did meet people, and the sexual harassment in the music industry is intense. It is, huh? Yeah. In your face? In my face. Every day? Every day. I remember walking into to Dallas Austin's studio, and there were about four or five guys, and it was like, hey, come on, have a seat. And you're sitting there, and you're wondering, okay, I have to be at school in the morning. Can you just like... And then they're like, come on, smoke a joint. I'm like, no, I don't smoke. Uh, do you want... I'm like, no, I don't do that. Okay, so what do you do? No, like, what's wrong with you? And then it's like, they took bets on who was sleeping with me first. Come on, in your presence? Pretty much, they don't care. There are a dime a dozen of artists that want to get in that studio, so they don't care. One guy said to me, you better get under the umbrella because you're getting rained on right now. Oh, hello. And I said, well, I'm about to get wet. And I walked out, and I did get wet, so. Seriously? Yeah. It is that cutthroat, is it? Yeah. It is that nasty. Mm. Yeah. 
So what did you do? Did you want to give up? Did you want to say, you know what, if I'm going to advance, I'm going to have to uh, give it up? No, I've never had that feeling. If I want to give it up, it's because I want to. Hello. <laughs> no, I never, ever. I think, I, in fact, I came home and said to my mom and dad, I don't know what you put in my head because I never, in fact, it was offensive to me and I would walk out. Would they pursue it? No. Once you said no, that was it? They don't care. Right, they'll go to the next one. There's so many. Yeah, they don't care. So, what did you do next? Next, I got into my acting. I started working with Tyler Perry. And it was going really well, and then my dad got sick, and then my mom got sick, and then my dad got sick again, and I just got on a plane and came home. At the time you came home, you were acting with Perry? Come on. Come on. Tyler Perry. Yeah. Shut up. You could still go back? I could, yeah. But I fell in love with, with uh, I guess you'd call it Africa. Well, maybe you can convince him to come to Africa. Yeah, maybe. No? No, my plan is to go back there. Really? But I would work with, probably with, with uh, Daniel Meacham that I, yeah, he's opening a film studio. I keep in touch with everybody, because you never know. Even the guys who try to sleep with you? Yeah. Business is business. It's nothing personal. Nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> so you come back to... <laughs> hey, I'm trying to tell my story here. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm all ears. Oh, okay. great. <laughs> so you come back. How did you meet Nameless? I'd, I'd opened up for Nameless in Atlanta before. Uh -huh. So I knew him. You met him then? Yeah. And then um, um, Sir Henry, yes. who would really want to be mentioned. <laughs> Sir Henry. <laughs> he was like my big brother in the UK. So what happened is when I came home, he's the first person I called. And he was kind of taking me around, meeting people. And he said, I know who you need to meet. And it was RK. And we actually went at the gas station opposite Yaya. And he's... Who's RK? RK, Robert Kamanzi, the big... Come on. Go on. <laughs> RK is one of the biggest producers in Kenya. Right now? <laughs> right now. He does Wahoo, he does Nameless, okay. he does Kidum, uh -huh. ATC. Yeah, okay. Right. You learn something on the bench every day. Oh my gosh. Anyway. <laughs> Lord. So you met RK? I met RK and that was it. I mean, I was sitting in the studio and Nameless had the session after me. He walks in and they, he was like, hmm. And we're like, hmm. And we recorded the song and that was it. And that was Sunshine? And that was Sunshine. Which goes something like? Oh gosh, how does it go again? Uh, well, you see, you need Nameless. Okay, just pretend uh, Nameless has sung his part <laughs> and then you sing your part. Okay. I see you wanting me. I see you checking me, I see you wanting me, and baby, I think you're fly. <laughs> that was sunshine. That was sunshine. Wow. You enjoy this stuff, don't you? I mean, I you, love it. I love it. You were it. born to do this. I was born to do it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And if you weren't doing it? I don't know. I'd probably be a beggar on the street. No, I'd probably be helping somebody in Turkana or something crazy. Yeah. Or you probably be in Atlanta, lost in, you know. By the way, after you ran away, when's the first time you came back? Because <laughs> you ran away at 16? Yeah, I think, I think I probably had enough money to come home after about two years. Two years? Yeah. Who, who runs away for two years? They came to see me. They came to see me. No. Yeah. You're bad, huh? No. You're terrible. No, I'm just determined. Because I knew in my father's house there was no music going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen. He wanted me to do law. Mm -hmm. And I hate reading. <laughs> it's like, not going to so, happen. So was it the UK they came to or was it America? The UK. The UK. They, they, they decided to come or you invited them to come or? No, as a family, we used to go every year anyway. So they... You know. They decided to come over. Two years later. Maybe a year later. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. A real rebel. Hustler. 
So, a, a dozen or so years later, what's it like in this business, especially since you're home now? I mean, it's not any, it's not any easier. I think now, being established and the kind of person I am, I'm just fighting systems, you know the way things are with MCSK, the way things are with, you know, there's no structure here, there's no real management, yep. there's no... A lot of pirates. Yeah. Oh my god. It's Pirate City. I'm telling you. You almost want to pirate your own stuff. I think that's what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I'm going to undercut the pirate. <laughs> You're going for 100 and yeah. mine's 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to talk about that after break. And also about Superwoman. Yes. The whole point about this is you want to inspire, you want to give advice to young ladies out there especially who want to try and break into this business and it's a tough business isn't it yeah tough yeah i mean how many out of ten actually make it one two none Sometimes none yeah. yeah yeah wow rebel with a cause can you ran away for two years no i no, ran you, away for like i don't know for 15 life. years i don't know <laughs> who does that me her name is Habida, and it means love. Your sister's name is? Bahati. Bahati. Gift or luck? Luck. Luck. Luck of love. Love, what, something. Yeah. At Habida is a Twitter handle. Mine is at Queen Anger Jeff. The hashtag is JKL. It's all about inspiration on this Thursday, folks. And we have, no doubt, arguably, one of Kenya's finest voices. And no doubt, a superwoman in the making. Keep tweeting. JKL takes a break. We'll be right back in a moment. <laughs> Can I get some juice? <laughs> <laughs>